Hopefully okay, so today I am doing a video all about hair. There's going to be two parts to this video and hopefully one part or the other or hopefully both will be helpful to you. So if you have noticed, you may have have or may not because this is actually the second time filming this video and the first one I filmed it yesterday, I looked back on it and number one, my lights are having a party which is why I'm refilming this and number two, I was talking about how I changed my hair colour but there was absolutely no difference in the camera whatsoever, kind of, so it's kind of like I was just talking about nothing basically. But I kind of had a bit of a play around with the lights today, so fingers crossed you can't actually tell and this video will have some kind of point to it, rather than you just sit and watch and yeah I can't tell any difference. So I posted about my new hair colour on Instagram and Twitter, I had it done on Thursday as I decided that I wanted to go a bit lighter for spring slash summer, now that we're into March I'm fully in spring mode and I had a lot of questions on Instagram and Twitter asking me what I had done, where did I go, what did I ask for and I just thought it might be quite helpful to kind of talk you through exactly what I had done, what kind of thing I asked for, what kind of pictures I showed and obviously like where I had it done too. The second part of the video will be my hair routine, so the products that I use on a day to day basis on my hair. What I love using, my favourites, because this is also something that a lot of you ask, like what kind of stuff I use on my hair. So we're going to get started because number one, my room's really, really hot and number two, I don't want this video to be too long because otherwise you'll just be getting seriously bored. So I had a half head of balayage, balayage, I can't say that word for some reason, I'm so rubbish at pronunciation but I will kind of like write it down somewhere around here and it's basically a kind of freehand hair dyeing technique. It's different to ombre and dip dye because that's when you tend to put kind of all one section with dye. This is more about doing like streaks and making it more natural and soft so as if your hair has naturally been lightened in that way. Um, so that's what I had done, that's the official term, and I went to the salon Hair and Bone, which is in London. It's five minutes, about a five minute walk from Oxford Circus tube station, so it's a really, really good central location. And a little bit of info about the salon, it's a fairly new salon, it opened in December. Sam Burnett, who opened it up, is quite well known in the hairdressing industry. He's like a session stylist, and he also does celebrities hair like Charlie XCX, which I kind of fangled over because I really like her at the moment but it's a really really cool salon it's quite small it's quite a small team but everyone was so so nice and lovely and welcoming and I would totally recommend visiting there if you're ever in London and you're looking for a hair salon to go to or you're making a trip to London or something I just I just thought it was a really really nice salon so basically my stylist Rebecca and Esther did a really really good job with my hair. I decided that I obviously wanted to go lighter so I showed a couple of inspiration pics to um, Rebecca who did the colour and basically I had this folder on my phone called Hair Inspiration which is basically the same pictures that's on my Pinterest enviable hair board so if you're interested in seeing the kind of pictures that I put in my hair album or the kind of thing that inspired what I wanted to get my hair like you can look on that album and hopefully if you're kind of looking for a similar kind of hairstyle or colour that may provide some inspiration. I always think it's really really helpful to take pictures with you because then you can kind of demonstrate exactly what you want because if I described what I wanted it probably wouldn't make any sense whatsoever because I don't really know what I'm talking about but I felt because I could show the pictures I could say this is what I want it to look like and it kind of gives the hairstylist a bit of a better idea. I think this is more helpful, I mean obviously I'm not a hairdresser so I don't know if this is helpful or not but it kind of gives them a better idea of what you're after. So I only ended up showing like four pictures in the album, I had probably about 30 um, but I only ended up showing four and two of them were Shay Mitchell who's Emily from Pretty Little Liars because I have been loving her hair which has kind of been like highlighted in season four, season five of Pretty Little Liars, so I kind of showed a couple of pictures of her and then I showed a couple of pictures of Bethany Moist, Moist, I can't say her name, Moist, Moist, I don't, why can't I say her name? Basically, Mac Barbie 07, that's what her old YouTube username, that's how I know her by. Um, I showed a couple of pictures of her highlighted hair as well. So I kind of felt like I got the idea of what I wanted across quite quickly and Rebecca totally understood what I wanted like just within showing those four pictures. Like thankfully we didn't have to go for the whole 30 because we probably would have been there 
a lot, lot longer. So basically what Rebecca did is she first of all put a darker gloss on my roots because my hair was like a medium brown colour. I hadn't put a dye on it for quite some time. It was a kind of almost had like a reddy warm tone to it, which was weird. Um, so she put a darker gloss on it, which is not a permanent colour. It's just to kind of add like a bit of a semi-permanent colour and to add obviously a gloss, which is why it's called that. And she went two shades darker than my natural hair colour, which was like a cool toned dark brown. And I hadn't even like thought about this, but it was actually, I'm really glad that she did do it because I think that the kind of bottoms may not have looked right with kind of my natural hair colour because it was a bit of a kind of mix match of everything. And then she kind of put some bleach that was in a certain shade. Now I don't know the exact shades because they were kind of all numbers. So there's kind of not much point me telling you because one, I can't remember. And two, because obviously it's not the kind of things you can go out and buy yourself. But Rebecca did tell me that she wrote, like, wrote it all down in my kind of file on the computer. So I'm sure that if you went to that salon and you asked them exactly what colours they use, they would be able to tell you. Um, but I kind of didn't really think there was much point. But basically she put like a cool tone kind of blonde bleach obviously on my hair and just kind of painted it on with like a brush and then she kind of put these kind of silk wraps on it and she left it on for about 45 minutes to an hour the whole thing um you feel like an absolute dork in the process because you just look ridiculous um but yeah she left it on for about 45 minutes to an hour and then it was washed off and then she put on some more bleach on the bottom to kind of make it lighten up as a bit of an ombre effect because we wanted to get some different kind of shades to make it kind of more natural and multi-dimensional. So she left the bleach on the bottom for about 10 to 15 minutes, probably not even that long. And then rinsed it out, put on a cool toned ashy toner because I decided I wanted it to be like a cool toned blonde rather than like a warm toned kind of coppery blonde because my hair can go a bit ready and that just wasn't the look that I wanted to go for. She left that on for a further 10 minutes and then washed it off and that was the colour done. So yeah, the colour did take a little while, um, it probably took about two hours in total, like the applying of it, leaving it and then the whole kind of washing out process, so it's quite a long process to have done, but thankfully my hair lifted quite well, I don't know if it's because it's been lifted a couple of times now, um, but if you maybe have hair that's never been bleached before or you've got a lot of hair down your hair, be warned that it will take a lot longer and you may not get the desired result like straight away. It's one of those things going lighter that sometimes you have to do it in gradual stages rather than in like one big go, basically. Um, so after that I had my hair styled by Esther who basically just took about an inch off the layer and kind of tied it up gave me some long layers and then kind of styled my hair. I decided that I wanted to keep it quite long still because I quite like it at this length. And then she did some curls with a Babyliss Pro curling tong, couldn't, couldn't think then, and then just brushed them out. And then that was basically how my hair was styled in the Instagram picture that I popped up on Instagram because people were like, how did they do your hair like that? And yeah, that was it basically. It was quite a long process. I was in the salon from 2 p.m. to half past six. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like a quick, easy process. And, but I am really, really happy with the result. I think they did a really, really good job. And both Rebecca and Esther really listened to what I wanted. And they kind of took on board what I wanted and then kind of told me realistically what we could achieve. And obviously they were the experts. But I would totally recommend Visit in the salon if you're ever in London because they were all like really really nice and I was looking around at everyone else whilst I was having my hair done and everyone like had really really nice hair. So yeah, I am super super happy with the colour, it's exactly what I wanted. I'm already kind of thinking I want to go lighter already which I probably won't do for like a few months and I'm sure that once summer comes around my hair will go lighter naturally anyways. But I'm really really happy with the result and I'm really really glad that I finally bit the bella and got the hair colour that I wanted because it seems to have taken a very long time to get here but we did it. So moving on to hair products. Now these are the products that I have been using in the run up to getting my hair done because you may think oh is that really important but it is especially if you're getting your hair bleached and lightened because it can be quite damaging on the hair so you want to make sure your hair is in quite good condition so that one it doesn't damage the hair a lot and two that your hair is not going to be really really dry and frazzled afterwards. I may have to change some of this routine up to make it a bit more moisturising because Rebecca who did my colour did say to me to be warned that my hair may feel a bit drier because it has been bleached so she was like make sure you do overnight hair treatments, 
do hair masks. You said just put lots and lots of conditioner in your hair when you're washing it to make sure that it doesn't go dry and kind of frazzled. However, the shampoo we're using at the moment is the Alberto Balsam Tea Tree Tring Tingle. Cannot say that. Um, the reason why I bought this is because, first of all, it was a pound when I was in Sainsbury's. And I think it was a couple of days before payday. So I was like, I literally have no money, so I can't really spend a fortune on shampoo. I was like, hard times. But um, to be honest, I'm quite happy to use whatever shampoo I'm really not fussed at all. As long as I've got like a good conditioner, that's the kind of important bit to me. And this is actually quite a nice um, shampoo. It makes your hair feel really, really fresh. I love the smell. It kind of reminds me of being a child, which is weird because my mum used, always used to use like tea tree shampoo and like she was scared nits were going to come. Anyone else's mum do that? Yeah, it wasn't a great time. So conditioner wise, I've been using some conditioner from the Mark Hill range, which I actually mentioned this hair mask in my favourites video. And um, this is the Miraculicious, um, the Moroccan Argan Oil range. This is the conditioner and this is the hair treatment mask. And basically I use a bit of both on my hair because my hair can get a bit tangled and dry from using like heat and from it being in a top knot at the gym and stuff. Um, so I just add a bit of TLC and I tend to leave this in my hair for about 10 to 15 minutes and it makes my hair so so soft and shiny and really, really nice. My favourite out of the two is probably the hair mask so if you're looking for which one to get I would get the hair mask but obviously if you've got hair like mine which is tough as old boots you can use this every time you wash it and it probably won't make you know won't make your hair greasy but if you've got kind of finer hair I'd maybe use this about once a week. The best thing about these conditioners, the smell. They smell like love hearts, which I've said in my favourites video is just a winner for me. It's something that smells a love heart and actually does a good job on your hair. It's good enough for me. I think they're quite cheap too because you can get them from like Boots and Superdrug. I think you can definitely get them from Boots. I don't know if you can get them from Superdrug. But yeah, definitely worth checking out. And even if you don't want them, just go and give them a sniff because they smell really, really good. So when I get out of the shower, what I do first of all, if I can find it. Dun -dun -dun everything all over the place i use this original mineral no knot conditioning detangler because my hair can get quite tangled up quite easily and it's always at the back of my head here um, I get like almost like a bit of a dreadlock knot, which really isn't great. Um, so yeah, when I get out of the shower, sometimes my hair can be a bit of a nightmare to kind of comb through. So I use this detangling spray, which actually does a really good job. It doesn't make your hair feel greasy or sticky. It just kind of really, really nice and light spray, which does the job. My hair's tangle free. So then I add the Living Proof Prime Style Extender, which I've spoken about before in my videos. In fact, a lot of this hair routine is very similar to my last hair routine. And that's because I'm just... I'm so happy of everything that I don't really feel the need to change anything. And this is the Prime Style Extender. It's a hair primer. It's one of those products that you don't think does anything until you stop using it and you're like, oh, I actually noticed a difference. And the reason why this is like a, it's a hair primer. So it's basically a, almost a style extender before you style your hair. So for example, if I don't use this and I curled my hair on first day hair, it literally just wouldn't last in my hair. My hair would drop out probably within about 10 minutes. But with this, it lasts for most of the day. I just feel that my curls last longer when I use this. My hair kind of stays in a style a lot longer. And it's it's a weird product, but I really, really like it. It's it's strange, but I really, really like using it. And I'm almost at the bottom, I need to buy it. Apparently Marks and Spencers now stock this, which is amazing. So I'm definitely gonna get that from Marks and Sparks. Finally, I use a hair oil, and this is the Kerati's Elixir Autumn Hair Oil, something that I've spoke about many a time, but I really, really like this hair oil. It's probably one of my favourites that I've ever used, like over Moroccan oil and different kind of argan oils that I've used in the past. It just does a really good job. It doesn't make my hair feel, like, weighed down or sticky, because sometimes I've used oils that just make my hair feel, like, oh, lank. Um, but it just makes my hair feel really, really nice, so soft. Like, you know when your hair's so soft you just want to stroke it, but you know you can't because that's weird. That's how soft it makes your hair feel. It makes my hair really, really shiny. And, yeah, I really, really like this. Also, I've had this since, I want to say last summer. And look how much I've used. Like, it's going to last me for such a long time. I think this is quite pricey. I've seen it on Feel Unique. I think it's about 25 to 30 pounds, but... Obviously, look how long it lasts, and I just love it. It's the one thing it probably makes my hair the shiniest, and yeah, really, really like that hair oil, a definite favourite. So next, it comes on to actual styling and hair products like that, and the Batiste Dry Shampoos are just my favourite dry shampoo brand ever. 
I would recommend getting the Batiste Tropical one for just everyday kind of use and then I've also been loving the Heavenly Volume Dry Shampoo, another one it was in my recent favourites video because it does just give your hair a bit of oomph, a bit of volume and I really really like it. My favourite hairspray is the Wellis Silvercon Classic and this is the number 5 maximum hold. I will warn you now, it doesn't smell very nice. If you spray too much on your hair, it will feel quite sticky, but it's one of the only hairsprays out there that actually keeps my hair in place. And to be honest, I can get over the fact that it smells like old granny hairdresser and I can get over the fact that sometimes it makes my hair feel a little bit sticky because I would much rather my hair stay in place than my hair kind of look like rat's tails, which is what it does when the curls drop out. So yeah, that's everything I do with my hair. Don't forget that if I have forgotten something which I probably have knowing me um, you can ask me questions in the comments or on Twitter probably best on Twitter because I'm always on Twitter so you'll probably get a faster response but yeah let me know if you have any questions at all but I hope you enjoyed this video it's been useful in some kind of way and I will see you very soon in my next video bye